What's up everyone? Today I'm going to make a video kind of on my thoughts on wireless audio and uh, I guess kind of give a mini review on this particular model. This is a FIO BTR 3K Bluetooth DAC uh, that I've been using for several months now. Uh, I also used FIO's BTR 1K for, for quite a while as well. Um, recently I, I've been looking more into Bluetooth DACs kind of thinking about them as almost like a, a DAP replacement. Uh, for those who don't know, DAP is a digital audio player, kind of a fancier version of, you know, what we used to call MP3 players or, or iPods uh, back many years ago. Um, but with what's happened in the past year, uh, kind of through 2020 and continuing into 2021, I think that a lot more people have been staying indoors at home more. Uh, myself, I, I live in a, a very busy city. I, I live in Queens, New York. Uh, I have neighbors upstairs and, and to the sides of me. Uh, fortunately, no one downstairs. And people have been staying home a lot, a lot more. Um, and in the past, I would use, you know, speaker systems with my TV or, or even like studio monitors to kind of listen to music and, and podcast. Uh, eventually, I changed over more to Bluetooth speakers for, for their convenience. Um, definitely sound probably not as good as you would get from, from a speaker system, but good enough, you know, especially if I'm not really listening to music and I'm listening more to podcasts um, or watching a video, then, then the audio fidelity isn't probably as important as, as convenience. Um, and that, that kind of comes to this set right here. Uh, I... I have a few different options for for wireless audio. I have, you know, both sets of uh, Apple's AirPods, the original first generation Buds, as well as the new AirPod Pros. Uh, a friend of mine also gave me Sony's um, WF one thousand uh, Mark Threes. They're they're noise canceling buds that that I use quite a lot as well. Um, but those don't really produce the same high quality audio that I might get from some of my other other options that I have. You, you know, over the last few years, I've kind of heavily gotten into the audio world and also kind of took a step back a little bit uh, and, and stopped with as much of the analytical side of things and started to try and more just enjoy the audio equipment that I have. Um, and, you know, right now, these are probably my favorite IEMs. Uh, these happen to be the Andromeda Golds. Um, nice little side grade from, from the original standard green Andromedas that, that I've been using for the last few years. Uh, and this setup, while not as convenient as a true wireless option, is lightweight enough and convenient enough where I think it's worth the trade-offs. Um, obviously for something like True wireless options, you know, these are the Sony's here to the side, uh, as well as the AirPods, uh, which are gonna blow out my white balance. Um, these are great. Uh, they're very convenient, uh, especially the Apple products. If you're using an iPhone, uh, connection to them is, is very quick, very simple. You know, you open up the case, you push a button on the back of the case and it connects to your phone pretty much right away. Uh, and afterwards, pairing is relatively smooth. Um, I do like the standard AirPods because when I use them in bed, uh, since there are buds and nothing sticks into your ear deeply, like into your ear canal, uh, it's a lot more comfortable. Uh, I tend to be a side sleeper and if I'm listening to music or kind of watching videos, in bed, uh, I might kind of swing my head over to the side. And when you're using something like the AirPod Pros or any IEM that kind of sticks into your ears, um, it can be quite uncomfortable. Uh, these are also nice in that they allow a lot of ambient noise out or in rather, not so much out because you're hopefully you're not listening at that high a volume. So you kind of get some situal awareness around you. You know, if you're wandering around at home cleaning and stuff, these are nice if you're not doing something like vacuuming. Uh, you know, if you're vacuuming or making more noise, then obviously you have the benefits of something like the uh, the Sony's as well as the AirPod Pros where you have active noise cancellation. Uh, they don't block out completely everything, but I have been very impressed with the am amount of isolation that these provide. Um, one knock I give the AirPod Pros is that 
they do kind of have Apple's proprietary oval ear tips. Uh, I happen to be using the Kony foams in here, which I find allow for better fit options and are more comfortable than Apple's standard silicones. Um, super convenient. One knock I would give these is uh, no way to control volume remotely. Uh, you have to go to your phone to control volume. Whereas with the Sony's, you ca can kind of set the touch buttons on the sides. And I have one side set up where if I tap it, it increases volume. If I press and hold, it decreases volume. And the other side is a uh, play pause. And for any, any other controls, I'll just kind of go back to the phone and use those onboard controls there. Um, but again, like I said, sound quality, they're okay. Uh, and with the Sony's, I, I do like that because they do have stems on them and you can kind of put whatever ear tips you want on them. Uh, the fit tends to be a lot better. Uh, and when I'm working out, these will be the options that I use. Uh, I don't really don't want to work out with wires that can get in the way of arm movements or weight movement or anything like that. So these are perfect. Also kind of, I believe they're IPX4, so relatively sweat resistant. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily worry about ruining something like this, which is a lot more affordable than, you know, a, a pair like the Andromeda's. Um, but these are, this setup has been very convenient to use. Like I said, almost as convenient as the true wireless options. Uh, I think that feel really hit a sweet spot with something the size of the BTR 3K um, versus compared to their newer one, like the BTR 5 or something like the, the Shanling uh, UP4. Uh, those are kind of a bigger package. Uh, n not so big that I think it would be an issue. They're definitely much smaller than like DAPs of the previous era. You know, this is my gold standard, the AK240 uh, with, you know, lossless, flak and everything like that. So a lot more convenient than that for sure. Um, I happen to be running this on a Linum cable, which is, as you can see, very thin, very lightweight. Uh, I actually kind of like how they coil up like this. Uh, when they're in your pocket, it can be a bit of a mess because they tend to tangle. But when you're using it, what I'll tend to do is these will be in my ear, uh, over ear, looped over ear, obviously, just for more security. Um, and I'll just kind of toss this into a pocket or, you know, it comes with a pretty decent plastic clip device with a spring clip. Um, maybe I'll like kind of clip those to my waistband or, or maybe sometimes even like a, a ball chain around my neck. Uh, and with this linum cable, it is quite nice in that because it coils up on itself, uh, I, I can just have everything underneath my t-shirt and I can almost have the same effect as a true wireless where because the shirt's covering the cable, nothing will snag. Uh, this may not be as comfortable with thicker cables for sure. You know, some of those fancier audio grade cables are that are braided with like four or eight different wires, uh, those tend to be a lot heavier. Um, and because they are heavy and they dangle down, a lot of times, even with this in your pocket, you, you tend to have a loop of wire that, that can snag on things, uh, you know. It, it depends on what you're doing. Uh, if you're moving around a lot, kind of taking chores, ta taking care of chores in your home, uh, cleaning or kind of going out and you're handling grocery bags or whatever, uh, not having a cable in the way is definitely nice. Um, in terms of the BTR 3K, I don't think it'll replace a lot of the dApps right now. Um, I'm not sure about the BTR 5, you know, all the reviews that I've seen s indicate that it's a lot better sound. Uh, I kind of question that uh, at the end of the day. Sound quality is only as good as your entire chain. Uh, it, it's not just the source, but it's also, you know, the files, uh, not and the amplifier and the DAC and everything. Um, definitely from what I can hear, if I'm using these Andromeda Golds with this line of cable in the balance output of the AK240, I'm getting much better sound out of the 240. But do I want to carry something that's this big and heavy all the time? Uh, you know, for me, during the summer, it's starting to get warm. This stays at home. It's too big. It's too heavy. I don't have a jacket pocket where I can kind of store it. Uh, and it doesn't really fit well in, in pants pockets, you know. So for a larger player like this, this tends to be more a, a fall and, and winter kind of carry. Uh, or just kind of stays at home and I use it as a source with the optical out for my, uh, for my 
desk amps, desk amp setup. Um, I do have an AK Junior that I'll carry, but even then, that's not almost as convenient as the Bluetooth uh, DAC. Um, when I used to take the subway, public transportation or whatever, having to constantly reach to your, you know, do things with your phone, like read an ebook or whatever, while you're listening to music and having a cable attached to it would kind of be a bit inconvenient. Um, but just being able to just drop this dongle into your pocket, use your phone normally however you want, but still have access to, you know, either your music library built in or maybe something like Spotify, Pandora, or myself, I happen to use Amazon Music. Um, it's really nice. Uh, problems with the sound that I've discovered with this is that there kind of seems to be roll off on both ends, the low end and the high end. Um, when you're switching and, and a being between higher grade, qu higher quality sound versus, you know, a more inferior sound, it, it's obviously very obvious and very in your face. Um, but after a while with some kind of what I like to consider brain burn in, uh, you get used to it. You know, you know every time you kind of change things in your audio set, you notice all the differences because you kind of get used to hearing whatever you're listening to over and over again. Um, but after a while, you can ignore it. Uh, and and I, honestly, for what I use this for, isn't even really music. Uh, a lot of times it's actually watching content, whether I'm watching you know, a TV show, a YouTube video, or, or even a movie. Um, it doesn't even matter, you know, when I'm using it with my TV, this obviously isn't getting paired to my phone. This will get paired to a Bluetooth transmitter that I have connected to the audio cables out of my TV. And I can now listen and watch TV as loud as my ears can handle without potentially bothering my neighbors to the side or upstairs with my own sound. And at the same time, I can also isolate the noise that they're making, you know, to a certain extent, obviously. But I think that being able to enclose your space, your audio into your own space is much better than having a loudness wars where you start seeing people complain about uh, their neighbors making a lot of noise. And, you know, the reality is everyone that's staying in, when you live, you're going to make noise, you know, and you can only hope that everyone is trying to be mindful about that and trying to reduce the noise that they're making. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, you can't avoid things like footsteps. You, you can't avoid when people are cooking. And I mean, even for me living in the city, I, I have subway noise. So this has been a great combination. Um, the 3K, I think, is a great size. Uh, from what I've seen, the BTR5 and the other options are bigger, uh, but not even for the sake of something like increased battery life. Uh, I think they tend to be bigger just because they're shoving in more, you know, DAC and amplifying chips inside, which I don't think is n probably necessary. I, I wouldn't re recommend using these Bluetooth DACs with something that's high impedance like headphones, but with any IEM that you're gonna have, these, you know, most of the DACs that you get now should have more than, than enough power to drive them. Um, the controls are simple. I, I don't really need a screen. In, in my opinion, I think screens on these mobile devices just kind of eat away more battery life. Uh, and most of the time, from what I've seen, the user interface is hot garbage. Uh, you're, you're better off just going, pulling out your phone and, and using that as the control. This is just basically acts as a receiver for your phone. And these days, phones you know, kind of do everything for us now in terms of technology. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of when Apple removed the headphone plug, but at the same time, I would almost argue that a lot of the audio quality that you get from external products is probably better than whatever a phone manufacturer will just build into their phones by default. Um, from what I've heard from some Android phones, they're a lot better, but I, I haven't experienced those in, in recent times, so I can't really say for sure. But this is a great size, provides exactly what you need for controls. Uh, it has, you know, power button, play pause, volume rocker, as well as if you hold down the volume buttons, it, it'll skip to next track or go back to previous track. Uh, that's really all I want. Uh, I, I don't need 
other options, you know, from for something like the the Shandling, I know there's like a mode button where you can switch high gain, low gain. Um, you can also go different and, and apply different filters, which I question how well they work. And I also kind of question if you even need them. Uh, I'm a big believer in audio equipment being as it is. Uh, I'm not a big believer in EQ. Uh, so for something that, you know, like the ES100, 1000, uh, some people, they enjoyed playing with all those settings. For me, that's maybe a little too excessive. I, I want the best quality sound that I can get as is from a product without having to fiddle. Um, in terms of connection quality, the BTR3K has definitely not been as good as something like the old BTR1K. Uh, this was probably one of the first more expensive Bluetooth receivers that I bought uh, off of Nathan uh, from Ohm Image's recommendation uh, just on signal strength. Pure, didn't matter how it sounded, didn't matter what app it had. Uh, this has basically the same functionalities as the BTR3K where you have your volume rocker, power button, and you know a play pause button. Uh, I think that's all you need. And I remember from his video review, this just had incredible Bluetooth connectivity strength. Uh, you can go several meters and, and not have things cut out. Uh, there are times as I wander out around my house where this will kind of disconnect from the receiver. Granted, there are times I'm kind of going behind doors or walls and that obviously doesn't help. Uh, but from a lot of other product reviews I've seen for other Bluetooth DACs, uh, even if you kind of hide it between your body where you have like your phone in your back pocket and this in your front pocket, the connection will just be that poor. Um, but this doesn't have, this doesn't have a balanced output, whereas this does. And the only Linum cable I happen to have right now is at 2.5 millimeter balance. Uh, so I don't know. I, I, I think that our Bluetooth DAX good enough to replace standalone digi digital audio players right now? Probably not, um, but they're definitely headed in that direction. Uh, you're starting to see that those Bluetooth DACs like the BTR5 uh, or the UP4, they're putting a lot more power out, uh, almost, almost at a cost of battery life. Of course, there's, there's give and take in everything, but I do look forward to seeing what comes out in the future. Uh, I think that as technology gets better and hopefully as companies try to innovate more, uh, you, you know, you see that Amazon, Pandora, Spotify, they're all, I, I believe they're all starting to offer HD options, uh, which will lead to better sound just for, just, just from better bit rate, uh, better audio files uh, versus, you know, with less compression than something like your standard MP3s. Um, Bluetooth, technology is also getting better with less latency uh, compared to some of the old stuff, like, you know, what you might find in some of those cheap $20, $30 MPOW dongles. <laughs> uh, so I'm looking forward to the future, and I hope you guys got something from this video. Thanks for watching, and have a good one.